This edition of the Rhode Island Spotlight is made possible by the Washington Trust Company, a proud supporter of the Ocean Community United Theater. If you grew up in Westerly back in the day, there was a good chance you saw your first movie and maybe had your first kiss at the United Theater. For decades, the giant marquee on Canal Street trumpeted the most popular entertainment at the time. The United Theater was always a, uh, a staple as part of our lives uh, growing up. Um, you know, there wasn't a day or a week that passed that we didn't come here to watch a Walt Disney movie or any movie for that matter, but uh, many memories at the United Theater. And a lot of people in town have memories here. Dennis Algier grew up in Westerly and was a patron of the United as a child. And I could remember, vividly remember coming here, buying candy, sitting with friends and family and watching a Walt Disney movie. That was entertainment. We enjoyed it. And uh, those were very good memories. But the multiplex theaters and changing entertainment habits forced the United to close its doors in 1986 and sit vacant for more than three decades. Now the United is undergoing a transformation to look like this. The newly christened Ocean Community United Theater plans to renovate the main theater building and the former Montgomery Ward department store adjacent to the original United, creating an arts complex. It will include two theaters of varying sizes, a flexible space for live performances, a professional community music school, an art exhibit area, and studios for music, film, and the performing arts. We've been focusing on arts, uh, entertainment, and uh, bringing the educational component into the art uh, venue is going to be very beneficial. It's going to provide a center of excellence. A theater of any type can, be, can be just be a wonderful magnet for activity. It happens to be located, here we are, spot in the middle of downtown, Philanthropist Chuck Royce, a longtime summer resident here, and Algier are co-chairing a $12 million capital campaign to create what they describe as a mini Lincoln Center. It is the most ideal location for a art center cinema that you could have. You couldn't make this up. So I'm thrilled to be part of trying to get it restarted it again. Although the bulk of the work won't begin until the United raises 80% of the total amount, the old theater already is somewhat of a construction zone. They have raised $6 million so far. The people in the community, uh, art and non-artists, are very supportive of this. And it's going to be regional in nature. Um, this is going to be a center of excellence for art and education with various partnerships throughout our region and state that's all going to come together very nicely at the end and provide that uh, cultural, uh, artistic center of excellence. Those partnerships include the Rhode Island Philharmonic, which plans to run classes in the adjacent Montgomery Ward building. The United is also in talks to partner with Trinity Rep. This town has great bones. Look around. Oh, everything is tight. They did not rip down a lot of buildings. I, I'm thrilled, usually in a downtown, Somebody comes in and has a bright idea to rip some, you know, and make everything back from the street to create a, you know, a really absurd looking um, shopping mall downtown. And it, it destroys the aesthetic. It destroys the street walking. That didn't happen here. So here we have a downtown that's next to the railroad station, that's 10 minutes from the beach, that is on the train tracks to New York and Boston, and it has all the bones you would want. As a kid, because I've always loved movies, I used to walk by this place because the marquee was up until um, maybe 10 years ago. So I'd walk by the place always wondering what's inside. Tony Noons was four years old when the theater closed its doors. It was kind of a, a ghost in my childhood. I'd walk by it wondering, you know, what is this place? What was it? And the more I learned about it, I, I used to have a dream of, you know, I was like, if I hit it rich and win the lottery someday, I'd love to buy this place and make it a movie theater and run a movie theater. Noons now oversees programming and marketing for the United, which is trying to reach people living in South County and nearby Connecticut who might not be inclined to go to Providence. We're going to show a lot of movies, but we want to, when we have the opportunity, we want to take 
all of the events we do and tie in a bit of an experiential model to them. We want people to feel like they're part of the show by bringing on filmmakers or writers or actors when we have the occasion to, to talk you know, to have talkbacks and conversations with audiences afterwards. Some of that has been happening already in the black box of the old United. From piano recitals and opera to a swing dance event and a jazz performance. It can fit a capacity of more than 600 people. Because the space is versatile, you can take all the chairs out and have a standing room only concert. You can set up in the round seating. You can set up, and we've done this, a runway in the middle with seats facing it to do a fashion show. Or have everything up on stage and have everybody. Or do a traditional, right. yeah. Um, and then the balcony will have seating that's fixed at all times as well. Last month, John Batiste, who played both the Newport Folk and Jazz Festivals, stayed in the region during the week in between and held a sold out concert and master class with half a dozen musicians before the show at the legendary Knickerbocker Cafe another of the United's partners. Noon said it is part of the momentum that is happening downtown. Businesses are staying open later, restaurants are staying open later. If you come down here on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, even in the winter, uh, there's people all over the streets. The United Theater is gonna be an anchor for that and it's gonna help bring people in at different hours. Royce, who discovered Westerly during summer visits decades ago, said he is working hard to have his fellow seasonal residents support the United. The pitch to the summer community is very simple. We are all in this together. The summer community should feel a, an allegiance and understanding of how cool the downtown is and they, I believe, should be part of it. They all come from different parts of the country. They arrive and they leave. They're not historically deeply involved with downtown, but I think this can change that and their support is critical. What are you looking forward to most once it's completed? Uh, the, the community, the, the people in our area coming here and enjoying a good night, a good day in, uh, out and, and, and also providing the education to those who want to be involved in the art so they can dive in and, and get, a good, uh, get a good sense of, of what's available in the, uh, the artistic world. Um, overall, just have people enjoy the, uh, this, this center we're going to have. Uh, and that's what it's all about. This awareness of what we're doing is really two months old. Uh, I'd say it's going very well. We're not there, but uh, I want to get there. In Westerly, Jim Hummel for the Rhode Island Spotlight.